today is give you an introduction to Microsoft Viva um, and really dive in and focus on Viva connections and Viva topics. Um, and just to introduce ourselves first, my name is Richard Burke. I'm Principal Technology Strategist with DeFacto. I have a consulting background, a lot of work done implementing solutions in SharePoint and Office 365. And I'm really looking forward to taking you through a bit of a journey of what Viva is, what it's about, and then focusing in with uh, some demos on the connections and topics pieces of that platform. And Dave, just do a quick intro to yourself. You bet. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, David So. I'm the Modern Workplace Practice Manager. Uh, I've been with Facto for nearly three years now. And uh, a lot of uh, what uh, Richard will be talking about today is uh, will be delivered by uh, my team members. So um, hopefully uh, you guys get something, uh, you know, a nugget out of this one here today. And uh, we're excited to hear from, uh, from participants of a follow up. So Richard, back to you. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. Um, so just a uh, quick agenda, um, really what we're going to do first of all is just focus on a bit of an overview of Microsoft Viva and really what are Microsoft trying to do with this platform. Um, so just discuss that a little bit and then delve into two modules of that platform and that's going to be Viva Connections and Viva Topics. Um, we have obviously at the very end of this, uh, we're going to have uh, time for Q&A. We're going to actually break in the middle of the demo as well. So once we're done Viva Connections demo, we'll stop for some questions there too um, and spend one or two minutes if there are questions at that time. Um, we think this will take about 40 to 50 minutes. It may be quicker, it may be a little longer, we'll see. Um, like I said, we've got most of the time is going to be set aside for questions at the end, but there'll be a little bit of time in the middle if you've got some questions right after that connections demo that we can delve into. Um, we're recording this and we'll be sharing that uh, next week. So if anybody wants to go back and watch this again, or if you've missed this webinar and you want to watch it later, that recording will be available. So I want to set the stage before we start talking about Viva, um, I want to step back a little bit and really address um, what this platform is about and what's the, 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 the kind of challenge that Microsoft is trying to solve. Um, and I think everyone recognizes, you know, over the last couple of years, um, organizations have gone through tremendous change. I mean, the pandemic in 2020 has changed a lot of things. And for people that work, for employees, we've recognized, you know, that it's reprioritize things for us. So people are starting to recognize, you know what, my life is not just about work and then going home and then going back to work. I got to prioritize health and well-being, and I got to do that at home and, you know, outside of work hours. But it's actually important while I'm in work, too, that I have that recognized and that my organization is caring about my health and well-being, too. So that's something that's become more and more important for organizations to recognize that about their workforce. Um, and the other big thing that's happened is, you know, if you think about 2020 and what happened with that pandemic, this great resignation we've all heard about, there was a huge turnover in the job market. And that's carried forward to today. There's still a lot of uh, uncertainty in the job market right now. And I think I saw a recent study saying that there's something like 45% of people working at the, at, at the moment are actually considering changing jobs or looking at other opportunities. And for Gen Z and millennials, that percentage is even higher. So, you know, there's still great uncertainty and, you know, uncertainty about that job market and people want to move and change and really recognizing that they want to find roles that fit them and organizations that fit them and fit the needs that they have. And the, the other thing that's become very apparent is burnout is a real thing that, we, you know, employees know they're burnt out and they're recognizing they're burnt out, but organizations are starting to see how that's affecting them as well. Um, and then when somebody gets burnt out, it means that they're not as motivated to do their job well, they're not performing the tasks to the best of their abilities, and that impacts productivity and it impacts the bottom line for them in terms of what they're trying to do and for organizations as well. So that's a challenge that organizations have and employees have around the world. Um, and when you couple that then with the, you know, the, the current challenges we're having in the world today around inflation, uh, supply chain difficulties, it's just becoming um, a big challenge for organizations. And really Microsoft recognized that trying to build something to tackle at least the employee side of that um, could be something that's compelling to organizations. And that's really where they're coming at from building a platform like Viva is they're trying to really build um, a better employee engagement and a better employee experience for, for organizations. And what that means is recognizing that if you do that, that impacts your bottom line. It impacts um, the organization's profitability. And it also impacts retention. It means that your employees are more likely to stay with the organization if they feel like they've got a better employee experience in the work that they're doing and in, in the interactions that they have day to day. So if you think about um, employee experience and what employee experience platform is, 
Microsoft's take on this is that right now, you know, they've kind of said it's five key things, um, and that's what they're they're calling an employee spirits platform. Um, and the first one would be, you know, making sure that your employees aren't being burned out and keeping an eye on the work that they're doing, how much time they're spending on things like meetings, how much time are they spending, you know, maybe they're spending their day in meetings and not getting enough work done after hours for, or doing work after hours to catch up. So how much time do they spend doing that sort of work? How much time do they spend in emails? And being able to kind of get those insights into how your employees are working day to day is a key part of the employee experience. The other thing you got to recognize is that people want to be able to grow in the jobs that they're doing and in the work that they're doing. So having good training platforms and learning management solutions for your organization so that people can, you know, they can grow in the jobs that they're doing, but also be challenged and actually get training on challenges and meet those challenges and see those as opportunities is a key part of the platform as well. Um, another thing that's important is Organizations set strategies, you know, they might set five year roadmaps, three year roadmaps, and build out strategies. And out of those strategies will fall goals. And those goals might be departmental goals, they could be business unit goals, they might even fall into individual teams. Um, so, being able to manage those goals in a meaningful way and track those goals right down to individuals and actually have KPIs and OKRs on those goals and actually, you know, a, throw out achievements and recognitions on those goals and make that meaningful across the organization is something that's important as well. The other thing that we've got to recognize is that what this is the big change since 2020. It's a much more hybrid workplace now. I mean, you're not working with people that are in the office with you day to day anymore. I mean, I know for myself, for example, I work with people in Toronto in the de facto organization that I've never met before. So our interactions are on teams all the time. You know, so we don't have that ability to kind of build the culture that you might typically have when you're actually physically together in, this, in a shared space. So how do you build that culture? How do you kind of shrink that world for your organization and build a bit of a culture for your organization. And that's really where culture and communications come into play there. And then the final piece of this picture from Microsoft's point of view is recognizing that across your organization, there's a ton of knowledge in people's brains. There's a ton of knowledge and content that people are producing and they're surfacing that content in emails, in SharePoint sites, in Teams and a lot of other platforms. How do you kind of lock on to that knowledge and make that knowledge meaningful for your organization? And how do you support people to be able to discover that knowledge? And that's a key aspect of that, of that employee experience platform. So really, that is what Microsoft Viva is about. It's about delivering on those sort of capabilities for organizations. Um, and if you look at the kind of Viva itself, what you'll see is it's actually composed of five modules. Um, and the modules are connections, which is the culture communications piece, insights for monitoring, monitoring that productivity and well-being, topics for building out that knowledge and expertise, Viva Learning um, for the learning management piece of the puzzle, and then Viva Goals, uh, which is not actually out yet, but it's coming for uh, that for purpose and OKR tracking. Um, so that's what Viva is as a, as a, in a nutshell. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on two of these modules. We're going to focus on the connections piece and the topics piece and delve into that in a bit of greater detail. So let's just talk about Viva Connections. And I just want to say, we're going to be out of the slides pretty soon and into a demo. So don't worry, this isn't all going to be slides. Um, but Viva Connections is really the, the recognition from Microsoft that they want to allow organizations to really leverage what they've got in Office 365, and in particular, what they've built in SharePoint, and provide a way for that to be spread out across the organization, regardless of how people want to consume that content. Um, and the key message that I want to make sure people are aware of here when they think about Viva Connections, you got to think of this as an extension of SharePoint, okay? Because you cannot have Viva Connections without SharePoint. It, it extends SharePoint in certain ways, but really the foundation for Viva Connections is SharePoint, and particularly your SharePoint intranet is a key foundation and a key kind of cornerstone for what you can do with Viva Connections. And you'll see that in the demo, that SharePoint's an integral part of that. So that's the first piece of the puzzle is that it really is around people keep making sure people are connected. Not everybody does their work on a desktop. Never, not everybody's gonna be using a browser to consume internet content or communicate. So you gotta recognize that and provide them the tools that they're gonna to need to be able to do that. And the other thing then is that you want to build, when you think about that culture, you want to provide the ability for people to contribute. So if, whether it's a new story and that they can like or give a thumbs up or a heart to, or even just reply and comment on and have conversations and discussions using the tools that you provide. So it's around enabling that kind of collaboration and support of the, the conversation that happens in your organization and making that possible around a variety of mechanisms in effect. 
So let's just talk about Fever Connections in a bit more detail from a demo point of view. So let me just hop into the demo here. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to show you the SharePoint piece of that puzzle first. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on a particular user that I'm logged in here as, okay, first of all. So I'm in here as a user called Adele. Um, so Adele Vance is a communication specialist for Contoso Electronics. So that's a fictional company. Um, and her role, um, you know, her role, there's a number of things to her role, but one of her roles is she's responsible for internal communications and pushing out communications to the organization. Um, she's new to Contoso. She, she's just getting up to speed on um, the, the tools that they have and the platforms that they have. And let me just give you a quick walkthrough of Contoso Electronics um, intranet. So this is SharePoint. So you're looking at SharePoint out of the box intranet landing page. Um, and if I just give you a quick overview of some of the key kind of components of that landing page, you'll notice we've got, um, for example, we've got the logo here. So Contoso Electronics that you can configure. And then no matter where, where anybody is within SharePoint, they click that to drop back to the landing page. So that's pretty cool. You've also got then on the landing page itself, you've got this intranet lab navigation with this kind of mega menu capability. So this is core SharePoint functionality. This supports the ability when people come to the landing page to navigate to things that are important to them. What is important about this is that if you leave the landing page, that navigation is gone. So if you're somewhere else in SharePoint or if you're in Teams, for example, you're not going to see that navigation. So it doesn't become as effective there. So that's very important. Um, the other thing to look at is on the internet page itself, we've got things like hero web parts. So we've got these main sections here where hero news. We've got company news feeds. We've got the ability to surface content in lots of different ways. And we can even publish content, um, you know, things like events, things like videos and so on. And the way you typically build up your internet content is what you like to do is you like to establish what's called communication sites in your SharePoint platform. And then your communication specialist can work with you to decide on those landing pages, what is the sort of communication that you wanna have bubbling up to those sites. And you do that in a number of ways. You can either decide to actually take some specific content from a communication site and actually publish it directly to the landing page. And an example of that is this um, employee onboarding section here, where we're pushing content from this onboarding communication site right onto the landing page so people can consume it. You can also leverage the ability to tag specific communication sites across your organization as what's called organizational news sites. And that gives those communication sites priority. And it means that news stories that are published to those communication sites get pushed up and get prioritized in terms of how they appear on your internet. Um, and one of the ways that they get prioritized is with this company feed, which is probably the first thing um, from Viva that you'll see here on this landing page. This is Viva Connections feed. So this will surface that content from your organizational news sites. And it will also surface content from things like streams and video content. It can surface things from Yammer communications as well. So it allows you to kind of surface content across different streams and have them bubble up onto the internet landing page as well. If I just jump over to the right, you'll notice on the landing page, we have kind of a right-hand side bar as well. Um, and you've got things there like, you know, your typical uh, time zones for the different offices you might have, uh, weather components for the different areas of your organization that people are working in. If I scroll down a little bit here, you'll notice we've also got this dashboard capability as well. And this is the second key kind of Viva Connections capability is this dashboard that allows you to kind of build out meaningful information snippets that might be useful for your organization. And they um, can be things like as, as simple as just news announcements that you want to surface on the dashboard, or they could be things like actual things that people can interact with, like uh, reporting IT issues, or actually kicking off approval requests for vacation, or even seeing things like their pay stub details. And if I just jump very quickly into the dashboard, I'll just show you how that dashboard gets configured. Um, and so I've gone in here, I've clicked into the dashboard, and I'm going to click into edit. And when I click into edit, one thing you will notice about the dashboard is that it brings it up first in a mobile view. And that becomes important when we start to look at Viva Connections on a mobile device. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But if I go to desktop view and go to the dashboard and I click into this, I can do a number of things with these dashboards. I can add a new card, for example. So I could say I want to add a new dashboard card. And one card I could add is another news dashboard tile. So I want to say, you know what? It's not enough that I'm pushing news out to the internet landing page. I want people to be able to see this on the dashboard too. So I'm going to drop in and add this news tile here. And then I'm going to move this up to the top. 
Um, so it's going to come in right after the IT systems health window. And I can republish that. Just one other thing to call out is that I can also target these tiles at specific parts of my organization. So I can decide that I want to target these at specific groups. So then different users, as they come to actually interact with the dashboard, they'll see different content based on what groups they're in, which is an important feature too. So let me just republish that and just step back out from the dashboard and go back to the landing page. And before I just get into the actual Viva Connection specific, I just wanna show one more thing, which is on the left-hand side here, you'll notice that there's a kind of a navigational area, kind of an app bar per se. And what that does is it surfaces a number of things. It surfaces what's called global navigation. So you recall I mentioned that this navigation here disappears as soon as you leave the internet. So what's useful is to be able to build out a global nav that regardless of where anybody is in SharePoint, for example, they can get back to it. So you can build out this global nav that surfaces this uh, in things that are important for your organization, this global nav capability, and allow that to be surfaced then across um, SharePoint, no matter where they are, no matter what site they're in in SharePoint. But it will also surface it on their mobile device too. And I'm going to show you now what that experience looks like. So give me one second here. I'm just going to jump into my phone and actually show you what the Viva Connections experience looks like on uh, the mobile device experience. Yeah, while uh, Rich is doing that, I just want to remind participants that uh, if you have any questions, please use the question and answer panel uh, available uh, in the session here, as well as uh, if you have a, a comment that you'd like to send to us specifically, you can use the chat uh, capability as well. Thanks, Dave. Okay, so let's just go into Teams. Um, and that's the first thing to be aware of. When you hear about Viva Connections, um, it's not an app in its own right. So when you hear about Viva Connections on a mobile device, it's not an app in the iOS store, it's not an app in Google Play. It's actually an app that you enable in Teams. So that's the first thing to be aware of. So Viva Connections is an app that you can deploy from Teams and surface that then to users that are interacting with Teams on their devices. And it will also surface in the desktop version of Teams as well. So you can surface that as an application. So you'll notice here, I'm in the Teams experience um, for this user. And on the bottom left, you'll see there's a, there's a logo icon there for Viva Connections. So I've got a little icon. I've got a name for that called Viva Connections on the bottom left there. That is customizable. So I can actually make that uh, be customized to be whatever I want it to be. So if I wanted to put in a, a corporate logo that we had that we wanted to use for, for the Viva Connections, we can do that. If we wanted to rename that to be something else, we can rename that and have that surface in the Teams experience. The other thing you notice is as soon as I click into Viva Connections on my mobile device, it's definitely quite a different experience for what you're getting on the desktop uh, in a number of ways. First thing to notice is that on the top here, we've got three tabs. So we've got dashboard, we've got feed, and we've got resources, okay? So that's kind of the mobile experience that people see. So front and center, when I go into Viva Connections on my mobile device, I'm seeing the dashboard immediately. So that just tells you how compelling that dashboard experience can be for your organization and how, why it's gonna become very important to leverage as part of that Viva Connections experience. And you know, just to remind you, that was what was on the right-hand side of the internet on, on the SharePoint site. So I can scroll through that dashboard. I can click in and see more details on the stories. So for example, that top news uh, tile that I added to the dashboard, I can click in there and see those and see those news stories that have been pushed out there. Um, I can scroll down and interact with some of these. So if I wanna see my time off details, I can click into that. So you can imagine how you can extend the dashboard to connect into things like vacation tracking, connect into payroll and other line of business systems that you might wanna leverage across your organization. But I can also just click in and see just information. So you can actually kick off and have information tiles in there as well. So surface that sort of information that people can leverage there, which is pretty cool. The other thing to be aware of is then, you know, how do people become aware of what's happening? So how do they see new stories in your organization? And that's where that feed tile on the top there comes into play. So if I click into feed, what feed does is it actually is taking that content that's been created on places like your SharePoint landing page or your corporate communication sites or your organizational communication sites. And it's gathering that content and pushing that out into what's called the Viva feed. And people then can leverage and access that feed from within here. And they can see stories across things like SharePoint sites that are coming into the feed. They can see Yammer collaboration that's happening. So announcements in Yammer, for example. Um, they can see videos. So they can see videos that have been surfaced here from um, uh, Microsoft Stream, for example. But not only can they see those, but they can interact with them. 
So you can do things like go in and see um, this post from Adele, for example, and I can hover over that and say, yeah, I love that post. So I can like that post and, and put that put a heart on that. I can provide feedback on that. So I can go in there and start typing, add a comment to that post basically and provide some feedback on that and send that feedback back in. So let me just do that real quick and show you that experience. Just post that. And just post and post and respond to those. So for my mobile device, I'm able to kind of interact and post on those things. I can also do the same thing with news stories. I can like news stories. I can unlike news stories. I can comment on news stories from my mobile device. So again, I can go in there and just comment and send those comments back and have those published. Um, and people then are, are consuming this content in other ways. For example, on the internet itself, we see those responses coming on back in. So you can see already how Viva Connections, really what it's doing is it's recognizing that not everybody wants to consume this stuff in the browser and not everybody consumes this content in the same way. And it's really about providing mechanisms to support how you communicate that content out. Um, the final tab up here on the top right is resources. So you'll notice at the end of the landing page demo that I showed you, we talked about global navigation on the far left and what that capability gives you is to surface navigation elements regardless of where you are in SharePoint. That's what resources is in the Viva Connections app on your mobile device, is it surfaces that global navigation here. So it means that even though I may not be a desktop user, anything that's important to me to be able to do my job or you know that's important for me to be aware of and consume and get to, I can do that via that resources tab and go in there and use that to consume that content. And again, you can audience target this content. So you can actually surface this, 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 this information to specific users and have specific parts of that global navigation surfacing for different parts of your organization, depending on what it is that's important to them. So it allows you to kind of build out and support that, that capability. Um, one final thing to call out is the ability within the feed as well to save things for later. So I can bookmark some of these stories for later if I want to be able to look at them later on. And those bookmark stories will appear then when I go in here and go into saved items, I can see those appearing um, in that connections experience and I get at them later on. So it allows me to kind of save that bookmark. Just a little bit of information about the feed itself. We'll just talk about this. How Viva uh, manages to push content out through the feed is really a number of different ways. It will do it based off of chronological order. So based off of how quickly or how recently new stories were created or content was created. It will also leverage some capabilities to promote news. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So promoted news can be pushed out into a priority as well. It will also leverage the capability to actually use what you've tagged across your organization as those organizational news sites. So these sites kind of get priority when we publish news to them. We want this stuff to be important. It'll use that to publish that stuff and get that stuff onto the feed ahead of other things. And it will also then look at you as a person, what you're following across SharePoint, what sites do you go to more often, what's happening in those sites, and also then what's the inter interaction across the organization. So how are people liking these stories? Are people commenting on news stories and use that to bubble those up into the feed as well. So it's really kind of providing a number of ways to get that content out to people in that experience. So let's just jump back to um, the SharePoint site again very quickly. Um, so one other thing I mentioned was that ability across news stories to prioritize news stories. And how you can do that is if I go in here and go into company news, let's go to leadership connection as an example. Um, and I'm going to go to one of these stories. So Adele wants to prioritize a new news story. Um, so the Singapore building update is a new story that's been published. And she wants to get that pushed out so everybody's aware of that story across the organization. So when you go in to look at that news story, um, give me one second here, let me click into that one more time. When I go into that news story, um, it shows me the page itself in SharePoint. But one of the things it does do up here in the top uh, section of the toolbar is it's providing some key capabilities. So you can see here, you've got a toolbar here with some capabilities that Adele has. But what it's also doing is it's providing a really key capability called Boost. And what that allows Adele to do is it allows her to prioritize this new story. So Adele can click Boost on this and it brings over here then the ability to turn on Boost. And I can say, right, how long do I want to boost this for? So I can say, yeah, I want to boost it till September 15th. I want to boost it for a week, whatever that might be. And if I'm boosting a number of different stories it can also allow me to prioritize the order that I want to boost those in. So it's really allowing me to push those stories out in a priority order to the organization. 
So I can say, yeah, save that, I'm happy with that. And then it'll start to boost that story. And what that will do then is it'll do a number of things. It'll mean that that story now will start to appear in the Viva feed. So it'll start to appear on the feed on your landing page. That story will eventually appear here in the company feed. People will start to see it. It will also boost it into the top news section of the dashboard on your desktop, on your mobile device, so people will see that news story there. And it just means that that capability is available then to actually push those stories out and people can see them. The other thing that's coming, it's not in connections yet, but it's coming, is the ability to have push notifications turned on for those news stories too, so that when people are using Viva Connections on their mobile device, they'll actually get notified when a news story gets boosted, for example, that they can go to and view, which is pretty cool. So one final feature I want to talk about um, is the ability to send out email digests. Because Microsoft recognized that, you know, some people still like to get kind of a, a, you know, a weekly or a monthly newsletter of what's happened in the organization. And really how you can do that is by leveraging the, the ability to kind of send out um, news digests of what's happened across the organization. And how you do that is really on the news uh, company news page, you can click into an area called um, email and news digest. Um, so over here, I've got this capability here, email and news digest, and it allows me to pick news stories that I want to create a newsletter for. So I can choose, for example, this news story here, news story about um, our new um, marketing officer, um, and this story here. And then it brings me to a wizard of actually creating a newsletter in effect. So I can click next. And what I can do then is I can give this news story a name. So I can say um, August 2022 uh, newsletter. Um, I can say who across the organization want to surface this to. So you could say, I want to surface it to everybody. Or if you wanted to, you can actually target specific news stories at specific parts of the organization that might be important for them. So you've got flexibility about how you do that. You can add optional messages there, and then you can send out that news digest. And that will mean then that basically people are going to get that into their Outlook in inbox as a newsletter. And from there, they can see those, those, those uh, tiles of the news story and then click into them to consume that news content. So pretty uh, cool capabilities and features um, across a gamut of uh, things across SharePoint um, on, uh, on the mobile device. One other thing I want to call out is, you know, when I talk about that integration into Teams, it's not just on the mobile. So if I go to Teams on the desktop, you'll notice here on the top left again, that even on the desktop, I've got that Viva Connections app icon. So I've got that icon there now that surfaced. Um, and it's really, again, you can customize the logo, you can customize the name of that. And if I click into that, within Teams, what that will do is it'll bring me to the landing page, first of all. So it's bringing your internet from your browser into the Teams experience, and you can interact with the content from there in Teams without having to leave the Teams client desktop. Um, but what's also cool is if I go back here and click onto this, you'll notice I'm getting a pop-out. And again, that pop-out is surfacing that global navigation. So now that global navigation, again, is surfacing in Teams as well as on your mobile device and as well as in SharePoint on your internet. You're now surfacing that global nav. So you're seeing how, how, how important that becomes to be able to let people get to things that are important to them quickly without having to leave the work that they're doing. They can just get in there quickly. What it also does is it surfaces the sites that I follow, so that's cool, but it's also surfacing then the news, so news that's important to me. Again, surfacing those news stories that are bubbling up across the organization. So it's another way to allow people to consume and get to that news story without having to go to their browser all the time to consume it. So that's Viva Connections, a very quick run through. Um, so let me just jump back into um, our presentation. And we'll just continue on, and then we pause for any questions that might come up. So just gonna recap what we just talked about. We talked about that global navigation capability. So that's a really powerful feature now. It means that you can build out a navigation for your organization that can be consumed by everybody, regardless of how they're coming to actually see that content, whether it's via the browser, whether it's via the Teams client, whether it's on a mobile phone. You can have a navigation experience that everybody shares and sees, and you can make that audience targeted. So you can target that to specific users across your organization, depending on what's important for them. Um, the dashboard is very compelling. So you've got that capability now to surface a dashboard on the internet. 
in the Teams experience and on the mobile device. And it's front and center on the mobile device. That's pretty much the first thing people see is that dashboard capability. And one thing to call out about the dashboard is it's highly extensible. So, you know, Microsoft are doing a ton of work on making this very integratable to different platforms and very easy to stand up very quick solutions to allow communication specialists to be able to publish quick tiles to the dashboard of compelling news stories or things that are important for their organization. Uh, the company Newsfeed, so you saw that Viva Newsfeed that's able to consume content across SharePoint news sites, SharePoint communication sites, um, stream videos, so videos that are important for your organization that you're publishing. If there's Yammer conversations, be able to surface those um, and, and really doing it in a way that makes sense. So doing it in a way using an algorithm that will surface, you know, prioritize news stories like boosted news stories, but also pulling in things for people that you're interacting with and news stories that are getting a lot of uh, collaboration or, you know, social interaction and publishing those on that feed. Um, the team's mobile experience is pretty key. So being able to actually see that experience on their mobile device from within the team's client means that not everybody who's obviously doing their work is going to be using a computer. So having that capability to allow those people to use their mobile phones to see that content and get access to that content is a key piece, piece of the Viva Connections uh, platform. Um, and really, that's just an overview of connections. Um, and we're going to pause before we go into topics, just see, Dave, is there any uh, questions? So we had a question about uh, whether or not uh, connections was a replacement for Yammer. So uh, as we can see here, uh, Yammer continues to exist, and uh, they've actually extended the capabilities of Yammer to be uh, included in, in Teams now as well. So if you have uh, some chats that span the organization, Yammer continues to be a great tool for that, and uh, it's now available in the Teams experience. And another question, kind of a follow-up to that, um, in more of a comment, I guess. It's it, you know they uh, astutely noted that connections seems to be more news orientated, and uh, I would say you know for the most part that's actually correct. So if you're if you would like a good platform to actually kind of radiate some information from the organization, uh, connections is well suited for that purpose. So. Yeah, that's a great that's great feedback actually. So that's that, and that's one thing to really think about. Um, because you're absolutely right. When you think about culture, it's not just uh, corporate news and it's not just pushing down the corporate news. It's coming from, you know, uh, those organizational news stories. And that is a key part of connection, sure, is surfacing those news stories. But one of the other things that Microsoft recognized is that, is that culture doesn't necessarily come from the top down. Culture is really how you're interacting with people that are doing the same work you're doing, your colleagues that you're working with. Um, and that's where things like Yammer do come into play is when you think about Yammer, the Yammer experience, what Yammer lets you do is it lets you have that kind of more um, collaborative experience and more um, organic news creation. That's not necessarily organizational news, but it's just news around your team or news around people that you're working with and surfacing that in things like Yammer. And yeah, if you publish something, for example, to a Yammer community, and you're in that community, that will bubble up in the Viva news feed as well. And that will bubble up in connection. So people on their mobile device will see those interactions that are happening in that experience in that news feed on their mobile phone too. So there's two kind of parts of that puzzle. And I think, yeah, to Dave's point, Yammer is not going away. And Microsoft do see Yammer as a key tool in building out that culture for organizations. You don't necessarily have to use it because I mean, a lot of organizations are using Teams for that purpose. But for organizations that it makes sense, you know, it's a compelling tool to think about. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. I think uh, we're good to go for the next section here, Richard. Okay, super. And we're we'll okay for time. We've got to move a bit quicker, I think. Eh? Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about topics. Um, so Viva Topics, Knowledge and Expertise. Um, so the, really the, the goal behind Viva Topics is making sure um, that you're allowing your organization to surface information that's useful to the people that are work, doing their work and, and surfacing it in ways that are useful. So making it discoverable, making it tangible and making it, you know, discoverable in a way that's more organic to the work that they're doing. And really what that means is making it available in the tools that they're using day to day, whether it's Word or Outlook or Teams, or whatever that is making that content available. So that's the first thing is it's a really around understanding that there's a lot of information across your organization and how do you unlock that information and turn it into something that's tangible. 
Um, and really the way that Microsoft have done this with Viva Topics is by using artificial intelligence and machine learning as a starting point to try and grab and create what it calls topic pages, and then allowing your organization to take control of that content and mold that into something that's definitely very meaningful for everybody, and then have that available for everybody to consume and use across the organization. Um, and really, when I think about making it meaningful, it has to be easily discovered. So that's the key part of this experience is that Viva Topics is trying to make information that's important to people easily discoverable and also allowing you to build up a bit of an organizational, nearly like a Wikipedia for your organization that people can have access to and leverage as they're doing the work that they're doing. So let's jump into uh, the Viva Topics demo. Um, and in this instance, I mentioned at the start that Adele is pretty new to Contoso. So she's new to this organization um, and she has an email here in Outlook from Nestor. And this email is basically telling Adele they're gonna be working together on a new initiative. Um, now you can imagine when you onboard somebody, the cost that is involved obviously in onboarding a new employee. One of the challenges every new, new person faces in an organization is knowing what's what, knowing, you know, you don't have an organization network set up yet. You don't really know who knows what, who's experts in what area. And just getting on, getting on top of the organizational jargon is a challenge for people. Um, and that's where Viva Topics can help because, you know, Nestor sent this email to Adele and he's talking about the digital services initiative. And what Adele can do is if she just hovers over that, she gets what's called a topic card. So, you know, if I look into this in a bit more detail, you see this topic card here that's surfacing information about that digital services initiative. And that's Viva Topics end user experience. That's what it kind of does for people as it surfaces that information. And if I look into this topics card, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the name of the topic. I'm seeing a link to a page and I'll show you that in a second. I'm actually seeing, seeing a kind of a short description of the topic. It's showing me who in this organization if I want to know more about this topic, I should be talking to. So who are kind of the important people across the organization and who are, what content is important? So what are kind of resources that I can look into to read more about that topic? And also at the very bottom of this topics card, it's surfacing things like related topics. So I can see here other topics that are related to the digital services initiative and actually see and consume that. So Adele can click into that. She wants to know more about digital services initiative. She can click that. And that brings Adele to what's called the topics page for that digital services initiative. So at a glance, then if I just show you this page real quick, what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing the title, I'm seeing alternate names that it's giving for that page. So it's saying it's also called DSI in this organization or digital SI. Um, I'm seeing that Isaiah is the person, if I wanna know more about this, I should be reaching out to to kind of consume information about that. And if I scroll down through here, I'm seeing, oh, this, this overview is actually a pinned document. So this is the authoritative document about this content. So I can click into that to learn more about it. And it's also surfacing other suggested things that I might consume about that content as well. And it's showing me over here um, how often that topic might be mentioned in that content as well. So I can see how, how important that content is. Um, if I keep going down, I see also suggested sites. So I'm seeing more information about sites across the organization that might be useful to consume in that content. But I also see down here this graph, um, which is pretty slick. And what this is doing is it's showing all the other topics that we have across the organization that are related to this topic. So I can start to get a better picture for where digital services fits within the organization and what other topics I might want to think about consuming and understanding to actually learn more about that across the organization. So that's pretty cool. And it's a pretty cool experience. If I just go back to that email. So um, Nestor mentioned to Adele, right, I'm gonna see you in Calgary next week for this project. So Adele recognized, right, I need to actually book my travel because I need to get down to Calgary. So if I just go to um, search and do a search for travel um, and just hit the search, I'm gonna get back, you know, whatever's SharePoint surfacing for travel across the organization. But you'll notice one thing it's also bringing back is it's bringing back this card at the top. So I'm getting back this card. And again, this is another topics card that it's surfacing in the search experience. So you're seeing now how Adele is seeing topics appearing in Outlook and then also in search. So she very quickly then can leverage that information and actually click into that topics card for more detail. She sees here who to talk to when it comes to business travel. And there's even a policy document here that she can click into. So you can leverage topics to basically make authoritative information available for people as they're searching for it. 
And if I go back and just show you that experience for DSI, for that digital services initiative, um, you remember there was an acronym for it, and if they do a search for DSI, um, that will come up as well as a topics card in that search experience. So I get that basically available to me. Final thing to call out here is that one of the ways that Topics works is it uses machine learning and AI to pull this content together for you, but it, it considers that not kind of finalized content. And one of the ways it helps to finalize and kind of validate and qual qualify and give, bring quality to that content is by crowdsourcing the information that it's surfacing. So this is an example, a case in point here. It's saying that, um, it's said that Johnny Sherman is connected to this topic. Does that seem right to Adele? So Adele, if she knew, she could say, yeah, that does seem right. Or if she didn't, she could say no. And what that means is that it's allowing you to crowdsource the quality of what's been surfaced in topics to a certain degree. And, and as you do that, then it will, if enough people say, yeah, Johnny is connected to that topic, he will become one of the pinned resources um, to that topic in the topics experience. So that's pretty cool from the end user experience. I want to kind of show you now um, from a kind of a knowledge manager's experience what the topics experience looks like. So I'm going to switch over to a different user. And this is Nestor that we're looking at here. Um, and we're in looking at Nestor. So Nestor is a knowledge manager for Contoso. So he has got some um, additional roles across, across Contoso. And one of his roles is he's kind of responsible for curation of topics um, in Contoso. So just to show you his experience, um, one example of this, it will be, um, he's on a SharePoint page here. He's got some details on the SharePoint page again. He sees that topics card. So you'll see again, that same experience is embedded in SharePoint too. So you can see the topics card in there. He can click into that and go to get to that topics card and get to the detail of that. Or he can go to the landing page of the topic center itself. So you'll notice when I'm on this digital services initiative page, you'll notice on the top here, it's saying that I'm in the topic center. So one of the things that Viva Topics does is when you want to leverage that for your organization, it's going to create a topic center for your organization. And that topic center becomes the place where it will create all of these topic pages that it will create for you and surface for you. And you'll notice here on the right um, that Nestor has on the topic center, he has this manage topics link that allows him to go in and manage the topics in that, in that site. So let's just click into this manage topics and show you what that looks like. So when I click into manage topics, really what we're seeing here is we're seeing a list of topics that I can manage across the organization. Um, and this is the thing to think about with Viva Topics is I, I called out, it uses AI and machine learning. Uh, and what it's doing is it's reading SharePoint sites, it's reading SharePoint content, and using that capability with the machine learning and the artificial intelligence, it's suggesting topics for your organization. So you don't have to go off and build these manually. It will go off and make these suggestions for you. So if I click through here and see, I'm getting a lot of suggestions that are coming back. And what it's also doing then is it's flagging for those suggestions what it thinks um, the quality of what it's come up with is. So what quality it's got there. So quality rating of that. And then it also surfaces in the topics how, how many people have actually been using those topic cards. So how often have those topics cards been surfacing? How many people are interacting with them? So you get to see impressions around those as well, which is pretty cool. So Nestor can go in and see those. And if you'll notice under the status column, there's a number of different status here. So I've got things like suggested, I've got confirmed, I've got published, and there's also a fourth status called removed. So topics that Viva Topics is surfacing for us actually move through kind of a four stage curation pipeline. Um, the artificial intelligence piece, anything that comes up with as a topic will always land in here as suggested. And organizations can decide whether they want to allow those suggested topics be surfaced to everybody or whether they want to make sure that only confirmed or published topics can be surfaced first. Um, so as a knowledge manager, what Nestor can do is he can go down here and look at topics and he can decide whether or not he wants to confirm those topics. So I can do that, for example, by clicking the confirm button. So let me just go in and click one of these topics and just show you what that experience looks like. I'm going to go into this um, digital services bundle. This is something that's been suggested by Viva Topics. I'm going to say, yeah, I want to confirm that is a good topic. So I'm going to confirm that first and foremost. And then I want to go in and actually look at the topics page and see what's going on on that page. So I'm going to go in and take a look at that. And when that page opens up, then what Nestor can do, because he's a knowledge manager, he can, well, let me go back and try that one more time. There we go. So, 
what Nestor can do is he can go in and edit that page. So I can edit this topic page. And when I edit that page, then what I'm getting is a few capabilities in here. So first of all, we talked about the acronyms. Um, so here I can actually surface acronyms for the PK digital services printer bundle. So if I have other names for that that we want to use across our organization, for example, I might be able to surface those. So I'm going to put in an acronym called PKDPS in there. So I'll add that as an acronym. Um, I might want to add another acronym. So I'm going to say DPS is also an acronym for this. Um, Nesta can also then, Diva hasn't come up with a description for this. So Nesta can say, yeah, I want to put a description in there. So I'm going to publish a description around that too. So let me do that real quick and put a description for that as well. Now, it's also suggesting then who should be the kind of pinned resource for this. So who's the person to talk to about this? And I can confirm then, you know what, this should be Diego. Um, he's the guy to talk to when you want to talk about this uh, uh, digital services bundle. Um, and then finally down here, I see suggested files and pages. What's the authoritative content on this? So this is something Topics has surfaced automatically. And I can decide then from looking at this, yeah, this overview here is actually something that's key. So I'm going to put, pin that so people can see that when they come to this topic page, pin that piece. And I can also specify sites that I want to pin as well there too. So I can control those. And then the final thing is then we, we noticed that Google graphic that Adele was looking at to see what was rated here. What Nestor can do as a knowledge manager is he can go in and review what Viva Topics has automatically come up with as connections to this. And he can kind of vet those and say, yeah, they make sense or not. So I can go in and look at this connection between this digital services bundle and Ward Baxley, for example. And I can do a number of things. I can look at that and I can say, is that a valid connection or not? So I'll say, yeah, this is a good connection. And the reason being is because um, they're one of our biggest consumers of um, this service. So there's somebody that uses the service a lot. So that's a confirmed connection. I can look at some other connections and say, yeah, that's not a valid connection, so remove that. And if I want to, I can also click in here and actually search topics and add other connections myself as well. So it's really a great tool for allowing you to build out a kind of an organizational knowledge base you know, that will connect these topics together, surface key information for these topics, and make those available for people to consume. Final thing um, to call your attention to is that at the bottom of this, there's also the ability to comment on these topics. And this is another part of that crowdsourcing capability because what it will allow you to do is it allows you to surface kind of immediate feedback from people on the topic itself. If they see something invalid or if they want to call out something, they can surface that detail too, which is, is pretty slick. Um, and let me see, I think that's everything in topics that I want to talk about. Just one other thing to call out um, is you notice that when I started off, um, I had an email going to Adele just to show her kind of, um, you know, the digital services initiative and talk to her about what that experience looked like. So if I go to Outlook and I start typing a new email, um, topics is embedded into Outlook web app. So I can actually leverage that. So I can say, hi, just, just wanna, want to let you know. Um, and I can hit hash and that brings up topics. And then I can hit hash and start typing an acronym, for example, or I can start typing an actual name for a topic and it will pull that topic from a list of topics that are in Viva Topics and surface those. So it allows us to actually present those back to people and see those topic cards straight away. And then when I send that email, it's embedded in Outlook that people can surface that. That capability is cool in Outlook. You can also do that on SharePoint. So when you're creating news stories or news pages on SharePoint, you can add, embed those topics in, in the very same way. It's also coming to Teams. So when you're in Microsoft Teams and you're having conversations with colleagues, you'll be able to actually do that hashtag in Teams as you're chatting and pull in those topics there as well so people can get that information right there. So it's a pretty slick experience from the end user perspective to be able to take advantage of that and adopt that um, across the organization. So that's our topics demo. Um, so let's just jump back out to our deck real quick. I'm back to Adele and I think I might have exited my presentation. I'm not sure if I did or not, let me see. I might have. So I'm just going to jump over to my deck. Give me one second. So let's just jump down to that. Uh, we, we just want to recap what we just looked at. That was a very quick overview of topics. Um, I want to give you a quick recap of what we were looking at there um, on the topic side. So you, you see um, you know, what we were looking at from a topics perspective. Um, so let's bring up the topics card. Perfect. So, you know, what we saw there in that demo was really that ability to see topics cards in a lot of different places. So you can see them in Outlook, you can see them on SharePoint news sites, you can, you're going to be able to see them in the Teams experience. 
Um, you can actually, if you're using Word, for example, Word Online, PowerPoint Online, if you're searching, you'll see those topics start appearing, uh, appearing in those experiences as well. So it's going to be appearing throughout Office 365 tools and capabilities. The artificial intelligence piece is pretty cool because it means that it can leverage content that you have in SharePoint sites and SharePoint libraries and automatically surface suggested topics for you and then allow you as an organization to go in and curate those um, by either assigning knowledge managers to do that or you can enable it so that everybody can see those topics and everybody can kind of do an, a crowdsourced curation of those, those topics and improve the quality of what's been presented there. Um, and when you think about that curation from a pipeline perspective, it goes through kind of four stages. AI will do that suggested, so you get that suggested piece. You can go through confirmed and published. And if you want to remove things from the, the topics card, you can remove them. Um, one other thing to call out is that it's security trimmed, so it doesn't prevent present things to people that don't have access to it. So if it's pulling topics from sites that maybe not everybody has access to, they will not necessarily see that content. So it's really going to use the security setup that you already have in your SharePoint environment. Um, and then really on the topics page itself, you know, you can do things like suggest acronyms or alternate names for those topics. And that's useful for supporting how people might consume and search for that content because they can search for it using the acronyms and alternate names. They, they can search for it using the topic name itself. They can see who are the key people to talk to about those topics. And then you can also pin the content that's important that you want to be able to get to to understand more about those topics as well. And then the topic center is really the place that people go to to actually understand and curate that content and get that information in there too. Um, so that's connections, or that's connection, that's topics demo. We're going to stop for questions in a second. I just want to give you kind of a quick overview when you think about the Viva platform itself, um, you know, how that gets enabled um, in your organization. Um, and the thing to call out really is, and probably the most important takeaway here is that these uh, first three modules here, um, if you have an enterprise plan for Office 365, you likely have those modules of, of either partially or fully available to you. So Viva Connections is fully available for any organization that already has an enterprise plan for Office 365. It, it is part of that plan. So it could become available to you through that. Viva Insights, is partially available. So you have kind of personalized analytics available as part of the VVM Insights package. And Viva Learning will allow you to surface um, your own training material and surface that in the team's experience using Viva Learning and track training via that um, for organizations that have um, you know, um, just you know, your regular Office 365 enterprise licensing plans. You do unlock with um, extra uh, licensing more capabilities for insights and for learning. So that's something to be aware of. You unlock more capabilities with additional licensing on those platforms. The other thing to call out is that these two products here, Viva Topics and Viva Goals, you do not get those for free with your enterprise licensing. So you have to pay additional licensing to unlock those capabilities. They're additional. And the way you can purchase those is you can either buy licensing for Viva Topics on its own, for Viva Goals on its own um, per user per month, and you pay those licensing fees, or you can license the whole platform. So you have a, a suite licensing for Viva as a whole as well that you can lock and license for your organization. Um, so that's just a kind of summary of how that Viva product is actually licensed and enabled across your organization. Um, next steps, really, we've really, this is very quick run through of connections and topics. If you're interested in this, you want to explore more about them, or you're even interested in some of the other modules of Viva and you want to learn more, let us know. We would love to talk with you in more detail about that. So please get in touch with us about that and let us know when we can uh, arrange that and have further discussions. And really, let's just open it up. I don't know if there's been many questions, Dave, but I just want to uh, call, call out any questions that might have come up. Yeah, you bet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so we do have a request here to uh, hear about additional Viva modules. I think that's going to be a follow-up session that we can absolutely kind of um, plan for. Uh, another question that came in here is uh, how does how does topics differ from uh, SharePoint syntax? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's a good question because really when you hear about SharePoint syntax and you, you hear AI and machine learning about from that as well, because that's a driving part of SharePoint syntax and Viva Topics is leveraging AI and machine learning behind the scenes to do what it does. Um, the key differentiator is 
SharePoint syntax is more around automating the work that your people might do day to day around things like documents. And what I mean by that is what SharePoint syntax can do is it can automatically classify documents for you that might be landing into SharePoint sites and libraries and then extract metadata from those documents and drive workflow against those documents. So things like, um, as an example, purchase orders or invoices that come in, pull out key metadata and drive approvals on them as a good example. Um, what um, Viva Topics does is it behind the scenes, it will use AI and machine learning to, to kind of understand documents and understand how people are working with those documents and then create topics that it's suggesting um, to be used in those in those um, Viva Topic Center and to be surfaced across the organization's, organization's topics. So it's more of a back end thing for Viva Topics and, and it's more of a front end thing to drive automation for SharePoint syntax. One thing to call out that's worth mentioning is that um, SharePoint, you can leverage SharePoint syntax to feed Viva Topics to a certain degree. And what I mean by that is that you can have um, and a great example of this might be vendors. You know, if you're an organization that um, has a lot of customers that you're working with, you might want to make customers topic cards, you know, so your customer name could be a topic card and who to talk to when you're dealing with that customer and key information about that customer. And SharePoint syntax can support that by whenever documents come in related to um, customers, for example, it can maybe flag new customer names, new vendor names, and then push that into Viva Topics to actually present a new topic for that vendor name. So it can actually drive um, the, those suggested topics out of Viva Topics as well. So hopefully that answered that question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. We have another one here. Uh, what analytics are available uh, within the two kind of uh, modules we explored today? Yeah, that's a great question. So Viva Connections, the analytics that you get for Viva Connections are really surfaced from SharePoint. So SharePoint has great analytics capabilities on those communication sites to see an engagement on news stories and engagement on the pages themselves. Viva Connections on its own right now doesn't have analytics. However, it is in the roadmap. So it's something that's coming from Microsoft over the next three to six months to build out the analytics there. What you also get though with connections, if you think about the Yammer experience as well, um, when you surface uh, conversations in Yammer or stories in Yammer, you get Yammer capabilities to do analytics on those as well. So see how those are being uh, collaborated on or how uh, the social interaction is on those news stories and get the impressions you know, that are coming across the organization for those news stories. So they're really more the backend tools that are providing the analytics when it comes to Viva Connections. The Viva Topics site, um, the Viva Topics piece, what's there right now is just an overall analytics capability to surface really how many um, sites and documents it's leveraging for Viva Topics and also to surface um, how many topics it's created and what stage they are in the curation pipeline. So you've got an analytics at a high level. Another thing that's coming from Microsoft is actual topic page analytics is coming. So again, the capability to see um, how many people are interacting with the topics page, how many people are going to those topics pages and consuming them, um, and what that kind of um, collaboration is like on the topics pages themselves is something that's coming again in the next uh, few quarters from Microsoft. Awesome. Hope that answers that question too. Yeah, it's a great response. Okay. Uh, we are at time here and just want to be, um, how would you say, uh, present about, uh, yeah, everyone's uh, busy day here. But uh, thank you, Richard. If you do want to get in touch, there you go. We have, yeah, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, I was going to say, please, yeah, and to that person that asked that question about more modules, absolutely get in touch with us and we can, uh, we can have that conversation. And we would love to um, give you a personalized demo if needed, just to explore that in more detail.